So right now we'll just kind of go back and forth. We'll ask everybody where everybody's from. Let's see who we got on. Let's see if I recognize anybody. All right. For those of you joining on the webinar side, let us know what city and state or country you're from. I'm in Southern California, Los Angeles, Ventura County area. Uh, Curtis, where are you at today? We're just south of Salt Lake City, Utah. Is it snowing? It, it was snowing this morning. There's a few, it's a little flurries right now, but we finally got snow on the ground. Nice, nice. How about you, Dan? Hey, I'm in Fort Lauderdale. Fort, Fort Lauderdale? Florida, yes, sir. I love that, dude. Is it is it like sunny and humid or what's it like right now? And right now it's very sunny and very humid. It's both. Bam, I hit it right there. Perfect, man. It's so good right now. I love that. All right, and for those of you joining us on the Facebook side of this, welcome. Welcome to Live Prospecting. We've got Curtis Fenn from Red X, and we've got Dan Valley, who's going to be prospecting live. We're going to be going in on old expireds here, so it's going to be fun. It's something that I've been doing for, for a while, and I love it. By the way, probably the best ones to call. So let's let's start with that. Dan, Dan can you tell us a little bit about you, your background, uh, what company you're with, and why you love calling old expireds? Oh, absolutely. So I'm, again, I'm Dan Valley. I'm the CEO of Royal International Realty. I've been doing real estate for 28 years and actually started prospecting 28 years ago. So right from the beginning, you know, my father started real estate back in 74 and my mother in 78. And when I got involved in real estate, first thing I said was, what do I do? And back then they gave me a phone book and they said, okay, you're just going to start dialing in the community, you know, or dialing on a page it's just calling it. And that's it. So that's what it is. And uh, yeah. Dude, I love that. So when you were call, you were calling on that phone book, just so that I understand, because <laughs> that's pretty cool. This goes back a long, a long way ago. I was going to say, was the phone book called the Red X phone book? Or I'm just wondering. <laughs> Man, it, it, it was actually yellow, but uh, we can say it was called the yellow book. <laughs> that's funny. That's, all right. So Dan, how did you transition into calling expired? How, how did that happen? Oh, man. So first of all, expireds is one of the best opportunities to actually generating listings. I mean, these are people that already had their hand up anyway, saying, hey, I wanted to sell. They just weren't successful with the person that they had it with. So for me, you know, doing uh, prospecting, you know, it came naturally, you know, calling, doing cold calls to just listed, just solds. And one day started doing for sell by owners and doing expireds and quickly realizing that, hey, expireds are in an incredible way to generate listings. I love that. So with calling expired, because I've been calling them for a while, my first coach ever at the time was Mike Ferry, right? So obviously, <laughs> if you've been in business for a while, you know that, you know, Mike's probably going to be your first coach. I've been, I've been coached by Mike for a very, very long time. So yeah. All right. So with that, the very first time I jumped into expired, uh, I was like, I was a little scared, right? And, and I think there's, there's a little bit of, a, of two things that happen. One is, if you're not used to calling people on the phone and getting rejected, it is that phone weighs about two tons. That's, that's number one. <laughs> number two is what I realized calling expireds at such an early stage in my career was that not many other people were calling them consistently, mm -hmm. right? And that was a massive opportunity for me because that became one of my three things to go to to get listings on. So, Dan, can you tell me about the success you've had just with expireds? And since we're talking about old expireds, tell me the difference between old expireds and new. What's that look like? Yeah, absolutely. So, OK, so calling expireds in general, let's put the mix in between the old and the new ones. If you average them out for me, I need to speak to roughly about 20 people to actually get one appointment when it comes to mixing that up, the new expires and the old expires. Wow. That's really so, good, man. To me, I feel it's good. Okay. Now Great. when I'm calling old expires, for me personally, I feel just because of my experience making these calls, I feel that I can get an appointment roughly about eight to 10 people that I speak with. Wow. Okay. So total calls, eight to 10 people, you're talking about calling around 150 to 200 people. You have one, yeah. one solid actual. That's correct. 
Exactly. Right. And that's where a lot of people sometimes have issues with is, hey, you got to make a lot of phone calls. And the answer is, yeah, that's why you got to use the dialer. All right, cool. And, and what does that look like on the dialer side? How many calls do you get through in about an hour? Just calls. So for expireds? Yeah. Uh, roughly anywhere between six to eight expireds an hour is what I usually run into. Um, if I'm calling new expireds, it's way less. It's usually about four to five, sometimes six an hour. That's, that's contacts per hour, Dan, or, or how many dials per hour? No, I contact think. per hour. Like for me, a contact is somebody who says hello. So the moment they go hello, that's a contact. That's how I count it. Do you count if it's a wrong number? Do you count it? And do you turn yeah. that into oh, an no. opportunity? Well, Okay, so if it's a wrong number, and you'll hear me say that too, if it's a wrong number, I flip it into, well, hey, have you thought about selling your home? But I still don't count it as a contact when I'm calling expires, if that makes sense, because I'm really focused on trying to see how many real expires do I need to get that I speak to to get a yes. There, there's, there's something I've noticed, Dan, uh, um, with, with power prospectors that because it even happened, Tristan was, uh, what I understand your question to be is, well, how many dials do you make in an hour? And, and Dan answered with, well, I usually talk to six to eight. And, and mm -hmm. that's a pretty common thing. I, I, I think power prospectors do not think in terms of dials. They think in terms of contacts and conversations. Oh, and they yeah. go, well, well, it doesn't matter. I need to talk to 20 people to get an appointment. Yeah. So that, you got to write on. Talk to, <laughs> that's it. You got to write on. I, I don't look at like, all right. Is it going to take two? Because I know it's going to take a lot. All I care about is I need to hit my contacts each and every day. That's all I care about. So how many dials to get there? It doesn't really matter to me. It's getting my contacts in. That makes a lot of sense. All right. So so then with that, tell me what that looks like on, and, and this is obviously before you, you start calling, because you're going to start calling. So yeah. those people that are waiting for that, I just need to set some things in stone. That's one I love that you've had experience with this. I love that you've called for a long time and remain consistent. You know your numbers. Obviously, you're with Mike Ferry, so you have to know your numbers. <laughs> I remember, right? Um, so with that, though, why do you still call expireds, whether they're old or, or new expireds? What, what does that look like on the transaction side for you? Oh, man. that Okay, look, if I don't make my expired phone calls, that right there means I can lose eight to 10 deals a year just with that, just with that alone. That's what it means for me, because for me, I, I know I need to get those in. All right. And so let's say this year during COVID, can you track how many listings you've gotten from this approximately? Uh, for, for expires? Yeah. For expires, I, I checked for coming on and I had four that were actually expired listings. Now, you got to keep in mind that I had to do a lot of pivoting because I'm also a broker. So I had a whole bunch of agents that were going through crazy mindsets and everything. And I had to shift and help them out and do all that stuff. But I can I can tell you four from the expires is what I was able to gain from it. To me, is good. You know? That's really good, man. It's good. And how much time do you spend on a daily basis calling old or new expireds? Oh, okay. So, well, I prospect every morning from 8 to 11. Sometimes I'll go to 12 if I don't hit my numbers. But in that time period, I dedicate one hour to calling expireds. I like that. So, and this is Monday through Friday, or what does this Monday look like? Friday. Yeah, Monday through Friday, sometimes Saturday. All right. I love that. And when you say sometimes sad, and I have these questions only because oh, no, you know, I love it. I've been running them for a while. So I know what to ask you only on Saturday. Sometimes you say, is that because sometimes it falls at the end of the month or beginning of the month? Is that what you're talking about? No, if I don't hit my numbers, if I don't hit my contacts for me, I have, I have a contact goal okay. and I need to speak to 50 people during that time frame. Now, you're not going to get that from expired. So you got, you got to mix it with just sold, just listed, cold calling, you name it. So I got to get my 50 contacts in each and every day. So if I don't get them, when I get to the end of the week, when I add it all up, if I didn't hit my numbers, then I know I need to call Saturday. I like that. That's awesome. I love that commitment, man. Got to do right. it, man. That's, that's very can, good. Can we, take, can we take that a bit further? What, what's the average price point of the homes you sell? Okay, so- market? Sure. So over here, it's so funny because you can go from one street to the other 
and the prices go way, way up. The average sales price in this area is roughly around four, 450. But I mean, we go up okay. to the millions. You know, I have one I'm going to be okay. putting on the market next week, 1.4. So it, and that so wasn't expired. So we did, oh, it wasn't expired. So I, what I was trying to do is say, say you say you, you don't take very much vacation, you work, you know, you, you only missed 10 days of prospecting the whole year. Mm-hmm. That's 240 hours if it's an hour a day, right? I mean, 240 hours. Um, I, I was trying to break that down into your hourly equivalent for, for calling. Again, because because we hear people, they say, wow, man, you, you're going to grind for an hour a day calling old expireds. People are going to hang up on you, get bad numbers. And you're going, oh, yeah, I made like more than my attorney. <laughs> if yeah. I do the math on the commissions I made in just those four deals, you know, that's going to be 200, 250 an hour. Mm-hmm. That, uh, and, and what's crazy is if I flip that to any agent almost any agent that I talked to said, would you just call regardless of the outcome? If I give you 300 bucks right now for an hour, would you just call as many people as you could? And they go, of course, <laughs> but, but they're not, but, but they don't think, okay, well, I'm going to do that for a year. And then I'm going to be invited to, to talk about my experience with Tristan on lab code agents. Well, yeah, dude, you know, that's a really good I, question I, that you asked. I love that. It, we see, I think, I think the problem is most, most agents, when they're starting to make the phone calls, when they're brand new, they're expecting the now type results. And the problem is, is you, you need to focus on the long term, not just on the now. I mean, you are going to get deals now, but you got to focus on, on the long term. You can't just rely on, you know, hey, I need to get a deal today. I'm going to get on the phone today. And if I don't get a, a deal today, I'm going to quit. You can't do that. You just got to keep pushing through, you know, and it will work itself out over time. But you, you got to look at the long-term effect of why are we doing this? And, and like you said before, Tristan is being consistent. Why are we doing that? Yeah. Why are we being consistent? It's because we want to get results and we're not going to get results if we're not being consistent. If we just call once or twice a week, you know, might as well, might as well quit real estate and go work, you know, go work somewhere else. Yeah. The consistency is the key. And if people, people that are tuning in and they're curious about old expireds or, or new expireds, I think the the first thing that I want to bring up, besides the consistency is the mindset that you need to be able to call these consistently, right? And so look, for those of you wondering where the prospecting is, just give us another few minutes. Nobody's asking, but I'm just wondering, right? People might be wondering that. The mindset, I need to to get that out of the way because people don't understand how tough that this can be, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't wanna make it sound like it's rosy and pretty, because right. it's not, but look, what, what is Rosie and Purdy that's actually worth doing long-term that has amazing, amazing benefits and results, right? Not very much. And this is one of those, if you work it hard, but you know, going in, this isn't going to be a piece of cake. It's not, you're going to get a lot of no's, a lot of hangups, a lot of people telling you to, you know what, to yourself, um, you're going to get that. And that's, that's part of it. If you choose old expireds, new expireds, and this type of, uh, of doing business. But Dan, how do you maintain uh, a mindset that helps you continue to go through this process consistently over the years? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing that I would suggest is you got to realize that it's not a personal thing. So if they're saying no, they're not saying no to you. Okay. If they're saying, hey, go F off, they're not saying that to me. They're saying that to the opportunity of selling. That's it. That's really it. They don't know who you are. They don't know who I am. When I'm calling somebody, all I am is Dan with Royal International Realty. And that's it. And then we present the opportunity of them want to put their house back on the market. If they say no, hey, no big deal. If they tell me to go take a hike, no big deal. I, you know, Once I hit next, I'm already thinking next. I already forgot about that person. You, know, you, can't, you can't let that, that, that negative voice that sits on your shoulder saying, oh, this ain't working. You know, why are you doing this every day? You can't let, you just got to push that to the side, you know? And when you start seeing the results starting to come in, man, it really motivates you and it pushes you to keep going. That's really good, man. I think, um, I think that the, it, if you want to talk about personalities on this side and Curtis chime in on this one, because now I've been calling expires for a long time since 2004. And I think the two personalities that initially can have 
some pretty big challenges with this one are the expressives and the amiables because one of the one of the main things that they require is some type of an acceptance right like oh exactly what you said they take it personal right they're like they don't they don't like me right and it's tough to keep going <laughs> Right. right. Yeah. Whereas the driver and the analytical, they understand, oh, this isn't personal. Let's just keep going. Right. right. So it's a lot easier for those two types of personalities to keep going through. Yeah. Right. Well, the funny part is, you, you know, I'm, I'm a high D personality. OK, I am a driver, but I'm also expressive. But I'm uh, also expressive. So but you're that's, primarily a driver, right? I'm primarily a driver, yeah. but I do have the expressive. And, and this is why, and you'll hear me sometimes, I talk to people and I just go, I, I, keep, I keep on talking. <laughs> the expressive <laughs> comes out on me, right? So, so I need to tone that down when, when it comes to, hey, what are they telling me? You know? yeah. and, and one thing I want to mention, I know you mentioned before about, you know, hey, some people go tell, you know, tell you, go, go take a hike or whatever. The worst one I've ever had actually happened about three months ago. And I've never had that bad in many, 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 many years. So for those of you who haven't made phone calls yet and you're afraid, like certainly calling expires and you're like, wow, you know, what if they scream at me? The chance of them really getting like nasty with you is really, really tiny. I mean, it really is. And if they do, so what? Laugh it off. Laugh it off and you just keep on going. Because again, they're not, they're not telling you to go take a hike. They're telling the opportunity to go take a hike. And in reality, would you want to really do business with them? Probably not. Yeah. No, that's, that's a good point. So I, I would chime in. My, my, my thoughts are much more kind of practical, tactical here. Uh, if somebody has a really hard time with that, I, mm -hmm. I, would, I would tell them there's other lead types that fit your personality really well, yeah. um, even yeah. from Red X. I, I, getting yelled at, and told to take a hike if you're calling a neighborhood around a recently listed just sold or, or just listed property is is so rare that it would ever happen that that True. people are just stoked to talk to someone you know and and have a conversation especially <laughs> if your script comes with enthusiasm because what expressives you know part of their superpower is you can feel their energy energy oftentimes through the conversation so if you are calling with energy and enthusiasm and I have great news of, about your neighborhood, you're not gonna deal with that. And the more you do that, the more confidence and, and that you have to then start calling expireds later and deal with you know, a little bit of the, the oh, you yeah. know, it, helps you, it helps you get a thick skin and prepares you to call expireds. So, yeah. so my advice for people who are, are over analytical on that is to start with neighborhoods and circle prospecting and then move into for rent by owners, which that's, that's just a business. Nope. Nobody cares if you call a landlord and said, would you rather sell than rent? I mean, nobody's going to yell at you. I think for rent by owners are probably even easier than, than I, a I, just sold. I, yeah, I, I agree. Called it. Can you believe that? I haven't called that. I've never called for rent by owners. Or, Dan, we're that's it. We're that, all, this is over, Dan. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna fix that for you because uh, right, I, I never called for red by owners. I never did it, you know. But uh, so, yeah, you know, for for me, stacking. Okay, uh, so to get my mindset right. So obviously, in the morning, first thing I'm gonna do. Okay, I'm gonna call somebody. Okay, like past clients. I'll start hitting some past clients to at least get that momentum going. Right. So I call my past clients. They're happy. I'm happy. I get in that mode, and then I jump into my regular expires. So I'll hit those expires. Once I run out of that, then what I'm going to do is do either just listed or just sold. And then after that, whatever time is left, I'm going to do a mixture between old expires and circle prospecting. And how that's where back, I'll- How far back do you go with the old expires? Man, I go back three years. I go up to three years back. Okay. You know, I go back to three years. In fact, it's funny, Curtis, I had done, uh, I think it was like a year and a half ago, uh, with Justin, I had done a uh, live prospecting uh, door knocking old expires. And we actually went door knocking. I went to, I think it was like 13 doors. I got three appointments, took one listing. And that was like in one hour. And these were all over. If I remember correctly, I went from, because we were trying to narrow down one area. So if I remember correctly, Curtis, I think we went, I think I went almost three years back, you know, and we just hit them. And yeah, yeah look, the, the great thing guys about Red X is that remember if the lead is still in your dialer they're not listed 
So go back two years, three years, there's nothing wrong with that. Their scenario may have changed. Maybe back then it expired, but the motivation wasn't that high. And now it is. Now they really got to make that move. Nobody's calling them. And now you happen to hit them at the right time. So I go back three years. I love it, dude. Thank you for that. Now you also mentioned right after you called just list is just sold. What's the purpose of calling just list is just sold? Oh man. So (laughs) that's great. Because first of all, you're calling the neighborhood, right? You're giving them the great news. Like Curtis said that, Hey, a home just listed or a home just sold. And depending on what script I use, if I'm using the uh, just listed script, I'm asking, who do you know that want to move into your area? Right. So I'll do that. And then, so I'm looking first for a, you know, do you know of a buyer that may want to buy that listing? Most likely they're not going to know anybody. So then what happens is the script then flips into, well, you know, thank you. I appreciate you taking the time to think about it and tell me when do you plan on moving? And now we go into seeing if the opportunity to list their home is there. Just sold, man, during COVID time, this is perfect. People want to know like what's going on with the market. So when you're calling them, man, it's great. You know, you call them and you're telling them, Hey, this home just sold. A lot of times they'll be able for what, how much? Wow. Really? And what time frame? I can't believe it. And now you see the motivation that opens you up to setting up an appointment. That's so true, man. Such mm-hmm. a good point. All right, going back to old expireds, and we're almost there. I wanna, I wanna play out between between us the that conversation, what it looks like with an yep. old expired, and yep. then right after that, I want you to jump into dialing. And for those of you who are tuning mm-hmm. in, uh, Dan's gonna take us in through a, a dialing process. We're not gonna be able to hear the person that he's talking to, but we are gonna be able to hear the dialogue that he's got. Right. This way you understand uh, how that works. And before we do that, there's one great comment by John Hickey. He says, an expired I called yelled at me for about two to three minutes before I could get off the phone. This was on Friday. I sent her a card thanking her for talking to me and said I was sorry she was having a bad day. She called me on Monday to list the house. She and her husband did exactly what I suggested, and it was a quick marketing period. That's a beautiful story. Wow. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. That is cool. I love that. And then obviously, I have some more questions for you. One thing I do want to add really quick that was a cool, cool story. I just remembered. Calling old expireds. Dan, Curtis, I didn't tell you this before. This is how I initially broke into the Malibu area. My very first listing in Malibu was one that popped up on Apple. Let me, you know what? Let me share my screen with you. I popped Malibu. it up here. Man, I, I need so, to go to your market, man. Dude, I know. I, you totally do. Man, so you see this one, Xanadu in Malibu? If you go on, if you have Apple TV and you go to one of their documentaries, they're showcasing Xanadu as one of the homes that has amazing architecture. I didn't sell it to them. I listed it before this, but when I saw this, I texted the previous owner. I'm like, dude, did you know your home's on? And he's like, of course I did. They, they kind of filmed me with it. I was like, oh, I haven't gotten to that part yet. Sorry. Uh, and he goes, but thanks for talking to me. This was at the very beginning of COVID that I saw this. This one was one of my first listings in Malibu from an old expired that we took at 5 million. So look, if you're looking to break into a market, what a better way just to do it with old expireds, right? It's a, it's, a, it's a great way. So I wanted to set you up for that, Dan. And let's call old expireds between you or I, or Curtis, do you want to take the role as the seller? Well, I, no, you better do this. You know the objections okay. better than I do. All right, let's do this. All right, All right. Dan, we'll, we'll, play, uh, we'll play phone. Here we go. Perfect. You call me and I'll be the seller. I'll be nice to you. We'll get through the process. I'll throw yep. some objections at you. It's just, I want to take people through the whole process. Sure, sure. All right. So ring, ring, ring. Hello? Hi, Tristan. Yeah. That's hey, me. Tristan. Hey there. This is Dan with Royal International Realty. And I see that your home had expired off the market back in February. Are you still interested in selling it? Well, you know, right after it expired in February, the whole COVID thing hit. And we've been back and forth and just we'd like to sell it, but we'd also, we're also wondering, I, I don't, I don't want people in my house, right? I don't want to, I was still living in this house, right? I don't want people to come in and out all the time. Sure. Sure. So, so what you're saying is you do want to sell, but 
the problem is you're afraid of having a lot of footsteps within your own home. Is that correct? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, that's right. That's, that's about right. I mean, obviously for the right price too, Dan. Of course. Uh, you know, nobody wants to give the house away, you know? So the first thing I want to mention though is, you know, out here in Broward County right now, marketing wise, we had 2,857 properties that actually came up on the market. And Tristan, we had 3,250 people that actually raised their hand and said, I'm looking to actually buy a home. And Tristan, they actually went under contract with a home just like yours. So what that tells us is that we're actually having more buyers than sellers, which means it's a perfect opportunity for you to sell. The other part that I want to mention, Tristan, is that mm -hmm. right now, since COVID is a big issue, what we're currently doing is actually doing steps that will actually eliminate people actually getting into your home by them seeing your home online first through different marketing channels that we do and virtual reality type setups. So right. I was able to get you to your next destination, let's say in the next 45 to 60 days. Would that be something that you might be interested in doing now? Well, how hard is it to, to find a home? Because like, like you're saying, it, it might be super easy for me to sell it, but will I be able to get a home that I like or is the competition just way too much right now? Sure. Which area were you looking to go to? Uh, well, about we've got about a 15 mile radius of where where I'm currently at. I probably want to go up another probably like 500,000. OK, another 500,000. OK, yeah. so here's the great news. You know, I have off market properties that would actually probably fit the price range that you're actually talking about. So a great idea would be for me to actually, you know, show you some of those properties in that price range. And there isn't any competitions because they were thinking just like you were to hold off for a little bit. Yeah. And we can actually get you into those properties now and see them. But okay. I'm available tomorrow at 4 p.m. And I can stop by, take a look at your home, or we can do it virtually. And then we can go from there. But what's better for you, 4 p.m. or would it be 6 p.m. be better well, for you? Well, tomorrow, 4 p.m. I mean, um, I have to talk to my wife first. And, and you know, I'm not sure she she's going to want anybody in the house. So... Of course, you got to talk to your wife first. I totally, I totally understand. Why don't we do this? Why don't we schedule a time for, you know, for 4 p.m.? And if anything changes, get back to me, let me know. But if not, I'll definitely be there at that time. If she is concerned about me walking through your home, I'm more than happy to actually set up a virtual meeting on Zoom. All right. And then you you would just go through the presentation or what, what would that be? How long would that take? I'm sorry, you asked me that as, as Tristan or as a uh, seller? I'm sorry. No, that's, sorry, seller, seller. Still okay, seller. So, okay. <laughs> I thought you were asking, okay. So yeah, I mean, I'd be more than happy to show you exactly what we do to sell homes. And uh, at the same time, I'll do it, you know, I'll show it to you virtually. I can share my screen and show you what's going on with the market. So All I'm right. available at 4 p.m. So let's plan for 4 p.m. Okay, let, let's, let's go ahead and do that. And then obviously... Uh, we'll, we'll listen into what you've got to say, and then uh, nothing, nothing's for sure, right? I'm just, we're just going to oh, listen. Yeah, no, no. I totally understand. Yeah, nothing's for sure at this point. And, you know, once you see what I do, then at that point, you can make the decision if that does work or not. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Let's do that. Okay, perfect. And then that's it. I would book the appointment. Now, what I would do in this case, now I'm going back to Dan and Tristan. So in this case here, since I was seeing hesitation, I would not pre-qualify you right now. I would call back right before and do my pre-qual. But if I felt that, you know, you were not being as much hesitant, then I would have went to my prequel. Got it. Got it. All right. So I like that. That's actually really, that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. So now let's say, Dan, let's say I, I was, I was like, yeah, you know what? Sorry, Siri, you got me there. Uh, <laughs> let's say that I said, let's hold off on it. Um, let me talk to my wife. I don't, I don't want to set up anything yet. Um, what would that, what would the follow-up look like for you? Sure. When I would call back, you mean? Yeah. Like how often would you call back? Um, in what forms of communication would you attempt to communicate? Okay. How would, how does that look? Sure. So the first thing I would do is I would, if you said to me, look, I really need to speak to my wife first before we can even commit to a time. What I would do is I would actually, because now I have you, you know, I want, I want to close you as fast as I can. So I'm not going to drag this on for days and days and days. So what I would do is I would say, look, you know, I'll give you a call this evening around 7 p.m. 
And by that time you were probably spoken to your wife, correct? Yeah. So I would go through that. And once we hang up though, I would actually take my phone. I would shoot a quick video saying, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. And uh-huh. I look forward, you see what I mean? I'm already putting in, Dude. I look forward to meeting you guys tomorrow at 4 p.m. I and love I that. Video. Good job on that, dude. I actually would just send a text, but that that's actually way yeah. better. You just leveled you just leveled my brain up right there. I love that. <laughs> yeah, text video, great. man. Yeah, yeah. I'll send that. a text video, and then I would just follow up after that. And again, I would assume the close. So I think this time, I think I went four. I think I, I tried closing you four times. I, yeah, I lost, but I think it was four. So I, I don't stop until somebody hangs up. All right. Now there's a question about uh time how much time it says tristan asked about time how much time do you take dan typically on a presentation okay so a listening presentation so te- technically if i can be in and out within 30 40 minutes that's idea does okay. it happen every time no because again my expressive personality will come out and that could you know so i gotta try to hit the my <laughs> my driver personality and try to state the time but sometimes that just that that's runs so right great. out you're opposite of me. I'm like, I, I'm like, this is already too long. I'm here. I, can't, I need to go out. Can you just sign it, please just sign it. That's me. But that's actually better. The way you're doing is better. You know, let's be in and out, you know. But let me tell you, once they get assigned, man, I'm out. You know, <laughs> you're like, I'm, see, yeah, door, that's man. where your driver comes out. That's funny. That's, that's it, man. The keys are in my hands and I'm out the door. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's transition into live calls. But first, yeah. um, Curtis. As he's calling live, because we're not going to be able to hear the other end, if we can pop up Red X, because I just got a question from James. It says, uh, Tristan, Dan, how are you obtaining prospective clients' phone numbers? In our market in Vancouver, Washington, most agents remove the seller's phone number from the listing when it goes expired. So perfect transition into this. So people can show what Dan and what I use to call expires for sale by owners, geo leads, uh, rentals, everything. Uh, we use Red X. So we'll showcase the back end of that as Dan starts dialing. So Curtis, you can uh, you can take over the screen here. That way people can. Uh, and Marcy, look, I typically say don't call DNC numbers. Usually all brokerages require that you do not sign it. I just had my brokerage, which I'm part owner in, we sent out to all of the agents saying, signing something saying they are not going to call, do not, do not call numbers, which is to the extreme most brokerages are, are going now just to protect themselves. So uh, I know some agents do, right? I know they say, oh, I'm going to call them and it's amazing, but I would say probably not. That's where I would put you on. And the cool thing about Red X, when Curtis shows it, it shows the numbers that say DNC numbers. So it's, it's perfect. All right, Curtis and Dan. I'm, I'm going to start dialing, right? You guys are going to start? Yeah, go ahead. Once I'm you stop, right once now. you start talking, we'll stop talking on this end. So nobody- Okay, cool. Yep, you got it. All right, cool. Curtis, I, I mean, I see, you see this okay? I see it, man. I love it. Can you explain what we're looking at here so people understand? Yeah, so this is Vortex. It's a lead manager. Um, all of your different lead types here expires. The geo leads is your geographic leads. So anything that um, in neighborhoods just listed, just sold, so your for sale by owner, for rent by owner, your foreclosure, any of the leads you want to import and use with the dialer and the technology. But the, the you know we started 18 years ago to answer that person's question for that very reason is we go out and find the contact information for the expired listing. So you have all the information here. Um, we have some cool add-ons that you can get that, that show you market insights. Uh, we were talking about this in the pre-show a little bit. Hello. It gives you all the information on what's going on in, in that neighborhood. So it's based on the zip code of where the lead is is currently at. So this days on market. As, as Dan is calling right now, this is popping up on his screen. And he has the information, right? Can you zoom into that DNC so people can check that out really quick on the left? Because that was a question. Yep. So, so I don't know if when I zoom in, if you guys see that. See that. So this number was would be a mobile number. It's on the DNC. So we tag it if it's on the DNC. If you're using our dialer, um, let me go back and just select some. I'll show you this. So if I just wanted to. 
well, I don't even have the dialer on this account, so I can't show you. When you go into the dialer, it already excludes those. Now, there are circumstances if you wanted to call those, you can say, no, I do want to call them and, and tell the dialer to call them anyway, but um, we automatically take those out just to call now. I love that. Yeah. So I also noticed emails on there, like when you clicked on Timothy. Yeah, so that's part of our Onyx upgrade. So it's going to include emails for the expired listings also. So we go out there and find find those. Um, e emails is a whole different ball game, right, for data because, you know, I, I, I personally have like 12 different emails yeah. that are probably associated with my name. Well, yeah. I think one of, one of the things that I love to do with emails is we have BombBomb, so we integrate it. So uh, what we do is we actually send out an email saying, hey, Timothy, or we actually drop it. It might not even have their name on it, right? Right. Uh, but you can definitely add that if you've got the email address. There's a couple of questions as we're waiting here for, for Dan to connect with somebody. Um, yeah. One of them is from I'm looking Oliver. For Hi, Lizette. Hi there, this is Dan with Royal International Realty. And I see you had your home that expired. Yeah, this is Dan with Royal International Realty. And I see your home expired back in February. And I was wondering if you're still interested in selling it. Hello? Okay, she hung up. All right, good, so next one. That counts as one contact. I love that, one contact, real life, people hang up all the time. And by the way, I'm paying attention to how many dials. Usually I don't, but just for the purpose of now, this was the fourth dial. Ooh. So, so not bad. That's pretty good, dude. That connection on the dial, I love that. All right, so then question with Oliver, Curtis, going to you. Okay. Can you can you sync Red X to follow a boss the way that others <laughs> other companies can here? So that's a great question. Currently, no, we make it real simple to get in and out, but we've we've already been in talks and Tristan's been pushing that yeah, integration. Patrona. Hi, Patrona. This is Dan with Royal International Realty. And I see that your home had expired off the market back in February. And I was wondering, are you still interested in selling it? Oh, okay, not just okay. If you had sold it, where were you moving to? Hello? She hung up. All right. Good. I love it. I love it. You got further on this one, Dan. I'm keeping track. Hey, hey there you go. You're getting there, buddy. You're getting there. All right. Uh, so, yeah, we're looking to integrate with Follow Up Boss. Good, good, good one. Um, another one. How about syncing with Chime, Curtis? That's a John Hickey. So, no, but I have no. The answer is no. Okay. So, um, but. COVID messed up some goals for us. 2021 is a goal for syncing and integrations. And, and, and some of these integrations can work with Zapier. I know that's not ideal, but some of them we're in already in talks with to do direct integrations with. So this is great feedback. We take all these comments to prioritize who wants what integrations and we'll go after those first. Yeah, and John and Oliver, I use both Chime and Follow Up Boss for both of my separate teams. One of them uses Chime, one of them uses Follow Up Boss, and uh, we still use Red X. So yeah, we're we're definitely excited about any type of connection there. Uh, Curtis, while we're waiting on on Dan here to connect, you want to show us anything else that you think yeah. is valuable on on your screen so we can see what Dan is seeing. Yeah, I, I think as he's going through, um, every time the dialer's dialing, it's showing him the lead that it's dialing, right? So it's just going to show him all that information. He's got the market insights. He can be looking at that while it's ringing. We do have data insights um, um, that, again, let me find one. I think mine is a test account. Well, on the left there, you don't have to zoom out, but on the left, one of those numbers is not a do not call number. So yep. people, people can see, right? Yep. So that's the one that you could reach out to. Um, Curtis, I just want to mention that that graph right there is amazing. That is so awesome. That saves me so much time by being able to see if you're in the seller's market or buyer's market or if it's neutral. It's such an amazing thing. 
Yeah, it really is, man. So, and all of this information allows you to speak from a position of authority and what's going on with their specific zip code with, um, you know, Curtis, right with everything, especially that that's key right there, because to me, I use that all the time, the days on market, right? And the median list price. And the cool thing is, if you scroll up a little bit all the way to the top of this one, you see where it says houses and condos, scroll up a little bit more. Yeah, I'm sorry. Right there, houses or condos, right? So yeah. in some cases it gives you the ability if it's a condo to be able to look at that. And then as you're talking, you're going to be able to say, well, look, it's a seller's market or it's a buyer's market. And here's why. Right. So, and in some areas like this one, it's telling you, Hey, there's not a ton of condos available. So keep that in mind as you're looking, because this is based on inventory of two condos in that zip code that, that are listed in the last seven days. And can so, you segment it to show us the segmenting at the bottom yeah. as well? Market set. Oh. you down underneath the segment. So it'll, this will tell you, again, with, with only an inventory of two, let me go to houses to show you that better. But this is gonna segment them into quartiles, the, the, you know, the bottom 25% all the way to the top 25% and give and break that information down so that you can really speak, not just in their zip code, but now in their price range within that zip code, which is pretty awesome. Um, while he's going, and again, uh, you know, there are times of the day matter for how many connections you're going to make. So we're probably. I'm surprised I had two pick up that already. <laughs> I, yeah, I think when you look at your time frame in Florida right now, 2.45 in the afternoon is probably not the most ideal time to be yeah. um, trying to connect. Let, let me just show you one more thing while I'm sharing the screen, because Dan was saying part of his daily lead stack is just listed, just sold. And, and that's a pretty... Um, easy thing to do if I just wanted to, I have no idea why my test account here is in Arizona, but you know, if, if, if I had a house here and I, and I just wanted to go, let me try to zoom in and get on a house here. Let's say I just listed this house. Well, I can just plant that there and I could say, well, I want to call the nearest hundred people to that property I just listed it's going to pull in all the names, phone numbers. Um, and if you have our plus program, it'll pull in all the emails for those people. You could even filter if you said, well, this is a newer neighborhood. I don't want to call and talk to anybody who's been there for less than 12 months. Then it would filter all those people out. So the ones that just showed up in gray are people who have only lived there less than 12 months. Dude. So, so as that. soon as you get that, then I can say, okay, get the leads. It's going to do some research here where it's going out and find all that information. And then it's yep. going to display those for you to, to be able to then load up and, and call, talk to you. I like that, dude. All right, questions here. Um, one of them, is it possible that if you write a note, it can show up near the person's name? Or what does that note show up? So I can write a note. Um, if I save that note, it's, it's, it's going to be so... If your default is to have your notes open, then in these contact records, it would show you a whole history of the notes you have on all those people. I love that. All right, cool. And this one might be a question for Dan, but when you get a hang up or super disinterested, do you keep calling these later or do you have a system organized uh, for that continued follow-up? Yeah, hi, I'm looking for Mindy. Hi, Mindy. Yeah, hi, this is, hi, this is Dan with Royal International Realty. And I see that you had your home expire back on the market. I have the wrong number. Oh, okay. Well, let's just have you on the phone. Have you thought about selling your home? Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. What was that? Do you, do you have a system for people that say, hey, I'm not interested uh, for calling them back again? Yeah. So uh, I have folders that are set up inside the, the dialer. And by the way, Andrew had actually sent me originally. Yeah, there you go, right there. So I'll move them throughout. So what I do, let me just pause for a second because it'll be easier to explain it real quick. So what I do is I'll have eight, eight folders set up. So what happens when I'm calling them, I move them to the next folder, to folder number two. So if they don't answer, the next time I roll back around, 
folder number three. The next one, folder number four. So mm -hmm. I move it through that way. If somebody says, hey, I'm not interested right now, call me. Let's say like right now we're in December. They say, hey, call me in June. I'm going to put them in a March folder. I'm going to cut the time in half and I put it in and I have January through December and I throw them into the folder for that month. And when I hit that month, I open it up and I go through those, uh, those leads. Oh. By the way, I wish I could do a screenshot. This lead right here, the guy just picked up. Okay. This, you know how many times I've called this guy? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 times. Like, I wonder if I can snap a picture and show it to you guys. Wow. 11 times, dude. 11. I just, I just got him. I just got him right now. Look at this. Let me show you this. Let me show you my, I don't know if you guys are able to see it or not. Let's spotlight you for everybody. I can stop sharing too. You see that? 11. These are every time. It doesn't look clear, but I don't, but you can see these are all different dates. I called that lead 11 times and he finally just picked up. <laughs> I love that. And that's what time he picked up. Times. See, you had and to try it 245 Eastern. That's why. Man, I'm I think I'm going to start dialing it in the afternoon. <laughs> Three <laughs> people picked up in like 20, 20 something minutes of dialing. Are you kidding me? That's amazing. In, in 11 minutes. I'm sorry. 11 minutes and 45 seconds. Three people picked up. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. This is. Yeah. Wait, was that three or four? Because I'm marking them. I'm marking them, but I don't know if I marked that one or not. Did you, guys, was, did you guys? Was, was it three? three? It was three or four. It was a hang up, then the other one that wasn't interested, then the one that had in sold, the, the one that wrong number. They said wrong number. You know, now I'm confused. I think no, it's number it was, four. I don't know. But what, you're doing a good job. Four. Weren't Let's any of the four. listeners paying attention? Po post how many calls? Oh, oh there four. we go. Tessa, Tessa said four. Thank, thank goodness Tessa's paying attention. Just, just, number just, four? just to so point four. something out um, that I think is really important to, to the mindset that you were talking about earlier, Tristan, is I, the excitement that Dan just said, like, oh, my gosh, 11 minutes. And, and I just talked to four people. And there are people on here going, yeah, but there were four crappy conversations or four people that were three and weren't interested, one, the wrong number this, but he knows his numbers enough to go. I just need to make 20 contacts and I will get an appointment. You got to get through the nose to get your yes. And, and I think that's, that's really important mindset because a lot of people after 11 minutes and four, four people that weren't interested in what you're trying to do are like, this isn't worth it. I'm going to, I'm going to go, you know, troll Facebook a little bit more and try to get uh, business. for me. I get excited. You know, I've already talked to four people in 13 minutes, yeah. man. I know my number is going to come up. If I can hit 10 right now, you're going to hear an appointment. I love that. I love that. So have you noticed more people being at home at different times, Dan, or no? I mean, I never call in the afternoon. I'll be. Hi, Dilia. Oh, it's a voicemail. Sorry. I thought I was going to get another one there. And so you don't, usually I don't call in the thing? afternoon. I'll be honest with you. So, this is actually not bad for the afternoon. You don't leave voicemails, Dan? No, not for the expireds. Okay. Uh -uh. How about for just listed, just sold? No. Actually, I don't leave only voicemails at all. I tested that. I've man, I've I've left so many voicemails over the years. The return, like for me, I'd rather not use. Certainly, if I'm using like a three line dialer, I don't want to use up a line leaving voicemails. I'd rather just move on. To me, it just makes more sense. Yeah, I don't see I you guys. By the way, when you guys are talking, I don't see you. Oh, uh, I don't know. Let, if me I still have my time. let me see what's going on here. Can you see us now? Okay. Yeah, hi. This is Dan with Royal International Realty, and uh, you had a home that expired back in February, and I was wondering if you're still interested in selling it. They hung up, so I didn't ask for a name because the lead says owner. So I just went right in. I love that. And do you receive any return calls from persons that, that missed your call or people that missed your call? I don't pick up any of those numbers. I like that. You know, some people like to, but for me, it's, I, I just, I know I need to run my numbers and I've checked over time that it doesn't, for me, it doesn't pan out. For me, I'd rather just dial and be proactive than expecting somebody to call back. The callbacks that I've had that I've actually called, like somebody said, hey, I missed your phone call. And then I call back, it, it didn't go that well. So for me, it wasn't worth it. I'd rather just dial and get my numbers in. 
I agree, dude. I've had the same, I've actually had the same results you're indicating as well on that. So it's not worth it. Same thing. It's not, you know, very true. Very true. So one, one thing I'll just throw in there, cause I know this always comes up. Um, old expireds, uh, there's no additional charge for old expireds than there is for new expireds. So, so uh, when, when we get the packet, we get old expireds, new expireds. What else do we get? Just so we we're listening. So, the lead manager and all the features in the lead manager is always included. So you're just, you're just paying for the lead subscription. So expireds is expireds. We don't charge more for the old expireds. Um, depending on how far back you want to go, that, that will depend on your MLS and how that works. But I, I know agents that have gone, Hey, I'm going to go back to the recession and find anybody who tried to sell during the recession. And I'm going to call them now. So they're going back 10 years. And they're, and they're doing great because people don't even know that their home has doubled in value since then. And <laughs> that's, a, that's a long time, dude. Yeah. That's so they're going, hey, 10 years ago, you tried to sell your home, but you're, you're still living there. Yep. You know, that's very and, funny. And so, Circumstances change and you just don't know yeah. when it's going to be the right time. And guys, you have no, you have like zero competition. Nobody's calling old expires. That's very true. Dan, we can, you can wrap it up if nobody's picking up. That way we just can, wrap it up. Okay. Yeah, that way we can all wrap up because I got a couple of questions I want you to answer. Sure. Give me one second. Let me just let me just shut it down real quick. Perfect. As he's shutting it down, Curtis, maybe you can answer this one. How how does Dan know who's calling him back? Is this part of Red X or do they call his number? Can you explain that? Well, first, Dan, how do you do it? Because there's multiple ways you could do that. But yeah. he, I, I don't know if you, yeah. So I'll be truthful. Okay. So. For me, I got a uh, burner phone <laughs> to set up my color ID on it, and then never, you know. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. So somebody calls it back; they they're getting, you know, it's that's how I have it set up. Yeah, so if you were to call the number back, it's just a disconnected number. Now, some people are going to say again; they're going to say, "Hey, what, why, you know, why are you doing that?" For me personally, in my area over here, if somebody's calling back every minute. I'd be calling back people that have no, that there's no reason. They just had a missed call. So for me, I don't want, don't want to get bogged down with having so many voicemails. I mean, I can show you my own cell phone, how many voicemails I have on there. It's like, it's crazy, you know? So I just don't want to get bogged down more. That's, That's how I do it. Now, I don't suggest other people doing it that way. And Curtis may shut down my account now. <laughs> he might say, okay, now you got to put in a, a new caller ID. <laughs> well, I've got two phones for the same reason, dude, right? So uh, it, it makes sense when you're a dialer and, and you're, you're doing that. So, yeah, I don't want my phone to be ringing every minute. So that's how I do it. Two things on sense. that. I, I, I would say that depends. You know, Dan has a full lead stack. He's calling five different lead types and he's and he's and he's doing it for three hours a day. Um, some people like in Malibu, you might you might go, look, I'm going to call 10 expires a week because those are the only ones I really want to list. Right. That's, that's all you um, need to call. And, and in that case, I would say leaving a voicemail is really smart. Um, depending on how much brand recognition you have in your market, leaving a voicemail is better than not leaving a voicemail. Um, and then the phone number thing, um, I, I think you could get a Google voice number. That way, anytime somebody calls you, you know it's coming through the Google voice number and it, and it just forwards to go. your cell phone. And that's a really True. easy way to do it. Um, at the end of this month, we, we actually have a service um, that that includes getting a, a phone number that you use for prospecting that forwards to your cell phone. It works a lot like a, um, a Google voice number, uh, but then you can also text from that number on the platform and there's an app that comes with it and texting wow. from the app and, and all of that stuff. So look for that. There's a little sneak peek um, mm -hmm. of what's happening the, the week after Christmas. Oh. Um, but, but it really depends on your market. And, and what I liked about Dan's answer is he, he knows what his market is um, and, and he prospects accordingly. So you need to pick a system and then you need to adapt it to, to your area and your brand and your personality. Very true. Very true. Good point. Two questions here and then we'll wrap it up uh, with, with closing comments from both of you. Marcy is asking, once you import old expires, does Red X keep them indefinitely? Ask me the question again. I was reading comments. Oh, no, no problem. Once you import the old expires, does Red X keep them indefinitely? Yeah, as long as you have an active account and, and not just keeps them indefinitely, but it will continually cross-check those to see if they get relisted. 
Well, that was the other question from Anna then, right. which is, does your expired data cross-reference those listings that were put back on the market or do you have to look them up separately? No, you don't. I mean, it's looking for it um, and, and, and cross-checking those, yep. Perfect. With the virtual number with Red X, uh, we'll soon offer, will you be able to text pictures or send videos like Dan did, right, video? So yes, you can send, yeah, they'll either come as an attachment or you can send pictures as an MMS, but yes. All right, cool, cool. And two other questions. Hey, can, can I just make a comment on video texting? Yeah. Shoot. So for me, I again, I like to grab my own cell phone to text them a video because, again, I'm that phone, if it rings, I'm going to answer it. So if I make contact with somebody, a lot of times they'll be like, oh, you know, I have I have your contact information from the caller ID. I'll let them know. I'll say, actually, I'm calling from one of my office lines. Let me text you my contact information. And then I'll just pause the dialer, do a quick video right there. Boom, I send it. And then they'll respond back. Because in my video, I'll mention, I'll be like, I'll say like, hey, Tristan, this is Dan over at Royal International Realty. Hey, it was a pleasure speaking with you. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to helping you sell your home. I know you said you want to do this in, in uh, June. I'll be keeping in contact with you. If you happen to decide to do things faster or sooner, just reach out to me. This is my contact info. And do me a favor. Can you just send me a quick text back to confirm you received my video? Ooh, and like when they text it back, I save that as their first name and I put seller. So I, if they ever call me in the future, I see the name and seller next to it. And you can bet I pick up that phone before anything else. That's, that's a really good hack. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like that. Uh, question for you, Curtis. How's the data in rural areas? That, that, I mean, that's a loaded question because, um, be, because it depends Sometimes it's great, sometimes um, it's not. And, and so depending on your, if you're, if you're in a remote town of 3000 people in Northern Montana, where I'm going this weekend for a vacation, um, one, I, I would say the amount of expireds in those areas, you could just, it's worth you doing the research yourself rather than paying us to do it. Even if the data is really good, um, you might be able to just get on Google, get on Facebook and try to find, cause there might be three expireds a week. Um, for other neighborhood stuff, it's really good cause it all comes, a lot of the information comes from public tax records. Um, and, and so that's always gonna be pretty good. All right, and then we had one more question that I wanted to ask you. Uh, 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 where is it? How often do you cross check? Cause I thought that was a really important question. It's a good question. So M MLSs are interesting because they can an active listing can be updated throughout the day, but expireds only expire at midnight. Um, and that's every MLS in the whole country because it expires when the date of the contract expires. So it's going to expire at midnight. So most of that cross-checking is going to happen uh, between midnight and, and 8 a.m. So there is small chances of if, if it cross checks at eight and you're calling and somebody went into the MLS at nine and updates the listing, that would show active the next day in your Red X account. All right, cool, cool. I like that. And what about- daily, daily is the answer. Daily, love that. Dan, what about you? What, what right now, what do you currently subscribe to with Red X? What does that look like for you? What, what does it give yeah. you? Yeah, I mean, I use the uh, for sell by owners and the expireds. I don't subscribe to the for rent by owner. Like I mentioned, I never dialed for rent by owners. Uh, maybe that's something I should look into as well. Hey, you can never have not enough lead sources, right? But uh, for me, I do the expireds and the for sell by owners. And I love it. I think the data is great. You know, I, you know, some people will say, yeah, but is there there's numbers that are not accurate? Yeah, of course, every lead source there's going to be a certain number. And from my experience, and Curtis, let me tell me if this is accurate or not, but for me, what I've seen across the board through the different lead sources that I, I get my phone numbers from, I have about a 40%, sometime up to 50% that are not accurate numbers. And for me, that's normal. Like I'm used to that. You know, I know those, that's normal. Across the board, I feel that's what I see. 
I don't know about you if that's if that's how you guys see it over there, but for me, with all the different lead sources, I can figure out that at least 40% of that are not going to be right numbers. And I'm totally fine for that because I have that factored into my my contacts, how many contacts I need. And if I don't have somebody, if it's not the right contact, well, it opens me up to asking them if they want to sell. That's really good. Yeah, I, I love that. Yeah, I think I think that's probably an accurate number. I mean, and, and it's getting harder to know if it's accurate or people just don't pick up anymore. I think yeah. that the the number that people should kind of their expectations should be set around those first numbers that you gave us, which is I I call, you know, yeah, I'm gonna call a hundred to two hundred dials and I get an appointment. Right. That means I'm I'm talking to I'm making about 10% contacts. And out of that, I'm, I'm setting an appointment. Um, and, and if their expectations are set around that, then it doesn't matter if you get a wrong number. You just keep going until you get the appointment. That's right. Um, but there's also um, a, a hack if you want more accurate numbers. And, you know, this wouldn't work for you, Dan, because you prospect for three hours. But if you just call the first number we give you, your percentage of accuracy is going to go up because we give you the one that we're most confident in. Like if we give you six numbers, the farther down on that list, the, the, the less confidence we have in that number. But prospectors like you, Dan, are like, well, I'm going to call a six because I'm loading them into a dialer and I'm going to increase my chance of connecting with someone. But somebody else right. who goes, well, I, I have 30 minutes a day, just call the first number and move on to the next lead. And you'll see your, your, your number of accuracy for that 30 minutes will go up, but your number mm -hmm. of con possible contacts over a three hour period would go down if people followed that. I love that. Well, they did. They did. All right, guys, there's a lot of questions. I put up the phone number there. It's 1-800-731-7339. If you have any questions to ask, you can ask them directly. Or if you're ready to sign up or you want to take a look at what they've got to offer, we also put up the link there. So I'll, I'll repost it up right now. Hold on. There we go. Let me see if it pops up. No, that's the number. And I want to thank Dan. Dan, that was pretty cool, buddy. I really appreciate thank you, man. that. Appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me on here and I uh, appreciate Tristan. I appreciate Curtis. Thank you very much. If you guys are not with Red X, you need to go get Red X. I, I'm telling you, you're losing business if you're not if you're not doing Red X. I've had Red X for I think eight years, Curtis, that I've been with you guys. Wow. That's awesome. I love I really that. I appreciate it. It's been Dan, that was... about eight years. And it's I love it, man. It's I, I can't imagine not using it. It's it's part of my I can't imagine not having that. If you guys don't have it, you need to go get it. You know, listening to you in the simplicity of the script, it just, it, it can remind people that it's all about the consistency and picking up the phone and just reading out the script. Now you, you've you internalized it, but it's it's an easy script, man. I still right? have it in front of me. You have no idea. I got all, I got all my, my objection handlers all right here. I still, you, I still have, you know, if I, even though I know the scripts by heart, I still put them in front of me. Because our human minds kind of does this while we're waiting for calls to answer. And I need to have it in front of me. So if I get, again, if I get sidetracked, I could jump back on the next question. So I have them right in front of me. But, you know, guys, get used to having simple scripts. There's nothing, it's not about having some crazy script that has 10,000 questions. It's about getting to the point and seeing if they're, if they're real or not. You know, if that person wants to make a move or not. And that's really it. I love it. Dan, thank you so much. What part thank of you, Florida are you in? I'm in Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale, we got any referrals, send them to Dan out there. Thank you so thank much. You. Dan and Curtis, he runs Red X. So you know who to thank for it being so amazing. So thanks, Curtis. We appreciate you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. thanks everybody, appreciate for tuning you. in. Bye-bye.